Hi everyone, this is Brian Bailey. This is my Logic Fest uh, quick tip. This is something I presented at a Dallas user group a couple years ago, and I tried to recreate that demo uh, for you now. So I'm going to go through it pretty fast because I don't want this to drag on. Uh, the basic idea is what I typically get from clients is they've already shot and now I need to figure out how to fix what they did. So this is something that you could execute a lot better if you had more input earlier, but that's not what I get to work with. So they shot a room and it's just locked off and it's a still image and they want that room to be in this phone that she's looking at. And you know, as she turns, you're going to see different parts of the room. So the basic idea, and I'm going to go from left to right here, just showing you some steps. Uh, what I did was I got a perspective grid and I don't have as much luck doing this with G mask when they're tracked, but the perspective grid does this really well. Um, the perspective grid is tracked on. And if you look at like a top view or a side view, you can see that the perspective grid is actually moving in 3d space and it should be pretty accurate. The G mask planar tracking isn't always accurate for what we're going to do. That's why I use the perspective grid. So it's tracked on there. Um, what I'm going to do is actually add a camera below the perspective grid. And then if we look at, you know, like the side of that, you see that the camera's moving with the perspective grid. Now if we take that camera and zero this out so that it's right on the, I'm gonna wanna do it to this camera, uh, move it to where it's right on the perspective grid. So what does that look like? Well, that's actually like the camera on the iPhone that is on the back of the screen or the back of the phone. Uh, you could actually go so far as to move that and you'd have to get it lined up just right to where the camera is where the uh, camera on the phone is if it's kinda like the top left or the top right I just left it right in the middle because I thought that was accurate enough for what we were doing so anyway if we look through that camera Change this to camera one, and I can't hide that now for some reason, don't know why. Look through camera one. We're actually getting this movement that mimics what the camera on the actual phone is doing. So next, add a sphere. So I've imported just a basic geometry sphere. I've added another output that is this camera so if we look through that second output and we're have that sphere lined up oh, I made it really big hopefully you can see what's going on here so that looking through that camera looking at the sphere we can get an idea of the environment that camera is looking at if we texture that with our still image and turn off wireframe we start to get something that kind of looks like the camera moving around in the scene. So the next step, I did a few little things, just a little lens distort to make the edges look even more fisheye. There's my output of that camera. And if we look at the result of that, and you can see that I made that action 1080 by 1920 since that phone is vertical and this is a little rough and like I say if you were had input beforehand you could actually get a spherical of the room but because I didn't get that I'm kinda cheating it and what the result is did a quick key to get that hand in there so I've got a layer that's the hand cut out and then the result of that second camera tracked onto 
the actual phone moving. A few more little tweaks and stuff. The result is, uh, I hope, passable. I could work on that some more. I could smooth that out, cheat it even more to get exactly you know what I want. But you're seeing what's moving in that camera that we actually used as the camera as if it was on the back of the phone. Uh, that's my quick tip. Thanks.